Hello, and welcome to our webinar. 23 Form Builder and Demand Blue have collaborated to bring you some ways to really enhance your program management for your nonprofit organization. I'm really ex my name is Arturo Ordoki, and I'm really excited to be joined. And I'm the head of the nonprofit practice here at Demand Blue. And I'm just so excited to welcome my friend Andre from 123 Form Builder. Andre, do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. Delighted to be with you. I'm Andre. I'm the enterprise uh, sales and marketing manager at 123 Form Builder. And uh, I'm glad to share with you today what uh, we can do to help uh, MPOs to collect better data. So for today's session, we're going to be showing you the power of forms and how they can really um, help you and your organization collect data that really improves your mission. Of course, our webinar wouldn't be complete without a live demo of the really amazing tools that our partnership with 123 Form Builder has brought. And then of course, we'll go through how you can turn this into options for your organization and answer any questions you may have. To kick us off, let's get started with learning a little bit more about 123 Form Builder. Andre? And you're muted, Andre. Yes, thank you. Um, so one to three form builder is a form builder as the name uh, states. And uh, with Salesforce, it allows you to easily build point and click uh, forms that can sync uh, two ways with the Salesforce. This means that you can either push data or use data that you already have about your constituents and create a better digital experience with them. So uh, we are 14 years uh, on the market, working with uh, 40,000 plus uh, customers worldwide. And what we are um, appreciated for, there are three main things. So it's the platform's flexibility and what you can do with it. And the fact that it's easy to use in uh, obtaining uh, the desired goals. And the highlight of this is the stellar technical support. And this is something that it's uh, not me saying, I think the slide it's a bit cut off here because the, there is a third point to, to it. Uh, yes, now uh, you can see it very well. Uh, it's not us that is saying this. This is something that you can find by looking in AMP Exchange or in uh, G2 Crowd where we've been nominated as a leader, high performer for um, uh, fall uh, 2022. So uh, this is, uh, in a brief, uh, a couple of things about uh, us. Thanks, Andre. And thanks for letting me know that it, the screen had cut off at the bottom. You're welcome. <laughs> so just to share a little bit about Demand Blue, we started as a Salesforce consulting partner back in 2012 and have been really excited to have the opportunity to work with over 30 nonprofit and educational organizations. In 2020, we formed our official nonprofit and education practice and have been excited to work with partners like Andre and 123 Form Builders to bring solutions and ideas to the nonprofit sector to help nonprofit and educational organizations maximize their use of Salesforce. We're happy to work with organizations through our unique model, which provides on-demand subscription-based services to organizations like local organizations, such as 40 Carats Family Center and Women Employ, to stellar organ, uh, colleges and universities like Seneca College and Napa Valley College, to well-known organizations such as Mothers Against Drunk Driving and the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee. We're really excited to bring our 4.9 rating from the App Exchange and 91 experts to work in the nonprofit industry. Of course, a webinar wouldn't be helpful to help you on without helping you understand why data collection is important. Andre, I want to invite you to share a little bit about how forms help nonprofits 
So um, we, um, while preparing this webinar, we thought about like what are the key things and how nonprofits use uh, currently forms in their data collection processes. So we looked uh, into our uh, nonprofit customers and put some data together. And we've seen that 29 is the average number of forms that a nonprofit organization uses. Uh, so that's an average. Uh, and the most frequent um, use cases are event registration form, program application forms, newsletters, uh, signups, uh, donation forms, and surveys. These are the top uh, top five. Um, now, um, if we look closer, we see that a third of uh, nonprofits use five forms or less to support their constituents' digital uh, experience and also to measure the activities that they do with them. Um, furthermore, we can see that the vast majority, 93% of nonprofit organizations uh, use digital forms exclusively for engaging volunteers, donors, or program participants. This totally left out, uh, leaves out the activities that they do internally, internal processes like human resources, uh, processes, job uh, um, uh, recruitation, recruitment or um, other activities like uh, surveys done to your employees and even operational processes like various maintenance, uh, maintenance that you have to run. Um, and this is something that 7% of uh, the nonprofits do. And this is a positive uh, sign for the direction that uh, uh, digital data is being applied both for interactions, also for operational purposes. And uh, now one aspect that is important, and this is what customers tell us from the beginning, is that support is the key factor when um, deciding to partner with one form builder or another. And this is because we see, uh, we also see this, that when um, customers work with us together, we can identify new use cases and better usage of this form and expand the usage. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, there are many opportunities uh, to handle forms, to collect data and give better experience with uh, things that are being uh, measured and can be uh, acted uh, upon. And today um, with uh, Art, we are gonna show uh, a bit more, just a simple use case with a couple of forms that will improve the experience. And I'm... Uh, a uh, pleasure to, uh, I'm pleased to allow, to, allow to give the word to Art. Thanks, Andre. Those are really important metrics to kind of show the opportunity for nonprofits to utilize digital forms a little bit more. During today's webinar, we're gonna kind of focus on the program management module and how forms can support that utilization. But we also want you to realize that during today's forms, um, and examples, these forms can be applied to other uses in your organization. Uh, as Andre said, you can connect the form to a payment processor, and use it to create customized, unique donor forms. You can also use the forms to ask for um, interest and feedback from your stakeholders. From your clients, if you're using, if you're doing care management and other direct human services, these forms in the pre-fill option can be used to provide health checks and contact updates to the clients you serve. And then of course, many of the forms that you'll see today apply to the volunteer program, but also can be extended to volunteer leaders to help capture the impact and outcomes of some of their volunteer activities, as well as stories from the volunteers and photos from the experience that you can use in your organization to support and encourage your mission. So today we're gonna to be focusing on Dream Big, our fictional nonprofit here at Demand Blue. And we're gonna be working through some of the use cases that they have at Dream Big with their Dream Big Read Big program. So here on the screen, you'll meet some of the characters that are gonna be involved today. We have T'Challa, who's gonna be our on-site coordinator. We have Jimmy Wu, who's our program coordinator. And we have Monica Rambeau, Rambeau as our Director of Community Programs. 
In addition to them, we have some readers and participants that are gonna be involved in the story as well, including Dr. Hank Pym and his daughter Hope, who are gonna be enrolling and participating in our Dream Big, Read Big program. So to get things started, we have Jimmy, who is really excited about the efforts that were used this fall to support the Dream Big, Read Big program. He's getting ready to open the nominations for the spring semester and is reviewing his form before he promotes it to uh, possible participants like Hank. So Jimmy logs into Salesforce and goes to his program management app. From here, the first thing he wants to do is he wants to go to see what the form looks like today. He quickly looks at a preview of the form and he scrolls down. And one thing that he notices here is that the fall semester is still an option even though it's actively in place. So as Andre said, Forms 123 Form Builder and Demand Blue have provided some enablement to Jimmy and the Dream Big team, but to be able to manage and update these forms themselves. But for today, since we have Andre on the call, we're gonna have him walk Jimmy through how to make this update so that the fall semester no longer shows on the screen. So uh, that's uh, really easy. You uh, need to go in the one to three form builder app that's uh, in your, on, uh, in your um, org in Salesforce and look at the, the form. You go on edit the form. And after that, you will be able to customize the form, but you've already built the form. So then you will need to look into the setup and see how the integration with Salesforce works. So on the left menu, you will see the Salesforce logo and there you have a couple of menus. What you are looking for is to understand how the data is being, is being brought from Salesforce to the form. And you notice that uh, you have uh, a lookup that looks for data that you are interested in the program uh, cohort object in Salesforce, and you would like to filter this uh, information. And what do you want to do is you would like to take uh, the status of the programs that are uh, planned. So you simply go into the Salesforce field that you'd like to uh, filter on, you select status, and then you decide that you would like only to bring to the form the planned version of it. So this is briefly how you can work inside the um, Salesforce integration from a form that you already have. And then you can go and look to the form that is connected to Salesforce and see if the change already actually took place. And yes. Great, agree. Andre. Thanks for helping Jimmy out with that. Um, as we could see, it was really easy to update the form, and now Jimmy is ready to promote it. He shares the form out through social media and through their website, which Hank learns about. Hank goes to the Dream Big website built on Experience Cloud and sees that there's an opportunity to nominate a reader. He clicks on the, on the link and is taken to the form to be able to nominate his daughter, Hope, for the program. Through the power of magic, Hank has already filled out the form here, and we can see that he's able to select options such as nominating himself or a family member. We could see that there are some dynamic fields. For example, Hank has said you can call, but he realizes that texting is probably gonna be a really great option. So he also checks text and sees that there's a new field available that agrees to allow text messaging. He selects the spring semester and some of the things he hopes that Hope will gain from participating in the program and share some information about Hope so that the staff um, at Dream Big can learn a little bit more about her and her interest. Of course, since this form is available on the public, on the public site, um, Jimmy has added the verification because he wants to make sure that his data is clean in the system. So having reviewed all the information, Hank submits the nomination for Hope to be part of the Dream Big Read Big program. The page loads and we get the Dear Hank 
Thank you for submitting the nomination. We'll be in touch soon. The next day, Jimmy logs into Salesforce and from the home screen, he sees that he has some nominations that have come in. He clicks on the one for Hope and sees that Hank has applied for the Dream Big, Read Big program for this spring. Jimmy then reaches out to Hank using the preferred information of calling or texting to get some more information about Hope and why she would be a good reader for the program. Jimmy is able to make contact with Hank and uses the update registration information button that links to a custom form that Jimmy has built that allows him to gather information from both the contact and the program engagement record. From the conversation, Jimmy starts to fill out the form based on the information he gathers from Hank. As Jimmy continues to communicate with Hank and answer his questions, he is able to get some additional information. He knows that Hope is too young of a reader to have her own email and phone number, so he inserts Hank's information and is able to review the goals that Hank had already kind of established when he submitted the interest. He was also able to add the current place of learning and the days of the week that Hope is interested in participating. Having completed the information, Jimmy submits the form and is able to go back to his record for Hope's program engagement and see that the information that he has gathered has now been provided. He could see all the other information has come through and is now ready to mark the record as ready for review. There we go. It's just a little bit of a delay there as the information was updated. So now that Jimmy has marked the record as ready for review, he's able to continue to receive and process the other nominations that he's received for the spring semester. As the nomination period comes to an end, Jimmy, Tachula, and Monica gather to review the nominations and evaluate how many readers they'll be able to accommodate for the spring cohort. Fortunately, Hope and many of the other nominees were able to be accepted into the spring cohort. And Jimmy is really excited to be able to continue the process and gather the information he needs to complete their enrollment. He marks the stage as approved and uses his email template to send an email to Hope and letting her know that she's been accepted into the program. Because he's already created this template, he's able to pre-populate a registration form link that provides a unique link for Hank and Hope to complete the registration and continue to update her information. Jimmy sends the email on its way and looks forward to seeing the response from Hank. Hank logs into his email and sees that Jimmy has sent an uh, email regarding the Read Big program and is asking Hank to complete the registration because Hope has been accepted into the program. Hank clicks on the registration form. So as the form loads, Hank is really happy to see that a lot of the information he had previously provided to Jimmy has already been pre-populated in the form. He's able to quickly scroll through and scan and see that all the information is correct. But after talking with Hope about the program, they've identified that another goal for her is to better understand what she is reading. So he goes ahead and makes that update there. He clicks to the next page and is able to see that there's a little bit of additional information that he needs to provide that hadn't been captured before. 
he starts to provide the name of Hope's mom as an emergency contact. Hank continues to fill out the form, providing some information about uh, Hope's current book that she's reading since she doesn't have any special needs. He also sees that there's a number of demographic information that Dream Big has asked for. And while he usually doesn't fill this out, he sees that Dream Big has provided the explanation that this information is really important for them to help raise the important funds necessary to support the program. And so Hank decides to complete the information, but is really happy to see that there is the option to skip. And when you select it, it suppresses and hides all the fields. Hank continues to complete the forms as requested and continues to the final page. Here, Hank sees what are very custom acknowledgements that nonprofits need to request when asking for student engagement. He's able to then sign and and complete the form. He likes that there's also the option for him to receive a registration or copy of the registration and authorization email to him. He gets the thank you message and is excited for hope to get started. Meanwhile, Jimmy is also excited because now that hope has submitted her registration, her status has moved to enroll. She's been added as a service participant for the Monday and Wednesday sessions. And if we go to the individual service schedules, so Jenny sees that she's been added to the attendance tracker for the upcoming sessions so that T'Challa can easily manage and report the attendance of the program. The big day has arrived and the first session of the Dream Big, Read Big spring semester is upon us. T'Challa is really excited to welcome Hope and the other readers into the program and get things started on their reading journey. T'Challa also knows that in order to be able to measure the progress of the readers throughout the journey, he has to be able to capture some of that information of where they are at the start. So while no one likes a pop quiz, T'Challa asks the students to proceed to the computer and fill out a quick five question evaluation of kind of how they perceive reading today. You may notice that as Hope enters her date, month and day of birth and student ID, the system is loading and once it finds a match, prompts her to go to the next page. This allows the system to be able to match the submission with the right student. Hope goes through and identifies that she feels like she's not that great of a reader and she doesn't quite understand things as well as the other students in her class. As a result, she doesn't really enjoy reading and she definitely isn't comfortable reading out loud. But she does feel like she knows most of the words that she is reading. So she fills out this evaluation and submits it to T'Challa. With that, T'Challa and Jimmy are able to see that the assessment has been received and we can now start measuring Hope's progress. He also uses the, uh, the schedule attract attendance to be able to match the attendance of the students. Fortunately for T'Challa, Jimmy has created a attendance check-in tool that allows the participants to self-check in for the courses moving forward, saving T'Challa time of having to record the information. So for the second session, Hope arrives and sees that there's a sign for her to check in. Once again, she enters her date of birth and student ID, and the system looks to identify a match. 
Once it finds the match, it presents to Hope the opportunity for her to complete her check-in. We could see that the sessions are available and we see today's session is showing as possible and she's able to check herself in. When she's done checking herself in, Hope is able to click to continue to allow the next student to check in after her. The attendance is automatically recorded and updated in the program management module so that T'Challa can record the engagement directly. As the program continues to proceed, T'Challa and Hope and the other readers are really advancing and time is flying by as they're reading and enjoying their dreams. And unfortunately, the 10 weeks has come to an end and T'Challa is having to say goodbye to Hope and the other readers. But before they depart, T'Challa asks them to complete another survey to see how they progressed throughout the program. For one last time, Hope enters her date of birth and student ID. And once the system finds her existing record, she's able to advance to the screen. And this time she sees the same five questions she had before, but now that she's gone through the Dream Big Read Big program, she feels like her reading has really improved. She really feels like she's on par with the other students. She's developed a love of reading and is even more comfortable reading aloud in front of family and, and friends. She also feels that she understands more of the words that she had before. In addition to the questions that um, Hope was asked at the beginning, Dream Big has asked a couple additional questions asking Hope if she's been able to improve her class, if the work has improved her um, efforts in other classes, and if she would be willing to share and tell her friends about the Dream Big Read Big program. Hope is really excited and says, yep, it really has helped her in her other classes, and she's definitely going to give a big 10 to the Dream Big Read Big team. She submits the information and is really happy to see the, that her progress is shared with her immediately. She's able to see right away how much she has progressed from the beginning of the program to the end. That makes Hope really happy and she goes home and shares the information with Hank and Janet. We also are able to go back to um, Hope's program engagement record. And if we click on the evaluation, we see that all the information has been captured in one record. This is really important because as the program has come to an end, Jimmy and T'Challa are really excited about the positive feedback that they've received and ready to share it with Monica. Monica, as the director of community programs, has a meeting with one of the big funders for the Dream Big Read Big program. So she logs into her Salesforce environment and she goes to the Dream Big Read Big dashboard. And right away, she's able to see how well the program is doing. She sees that enrollment has greatly, in, and interest has greatly improved from the fall to the spring. And we're even starting to get some summer interest ahead of time. She sees that there's, from the evaluations, that the students are really progressing with an average of two at the start to almost three and a half when they're done with the program. She's able to see that the attendance has been really great this spring and that students are able to um, demonstrate how they've been, their love of reading has increased. She also likes that she's able to evaluate this data in a variety of different ways, both by seeing what the level of increase was here with some students increasing by one, but a lot of students increasing by four from a one to five because of the program. She's also able to see that a large number of the participants are really excited about the read, read, dream, 
read big, dream big program and are willing to share the information with others. She's also able to kind of evaluate that the majority of the participants um, really are agreeing with the fact that they are enjoying reading upon completion of the program. Monica loves to be able to see the impact that the Dream Big, Read Big program is having in her community and that these numbers help her tell that story to her funders. Well, our story has ended here for Read Dream Big, Read Big, but I hope you've enjoyed seeing how some of the forms along with the program management module really help nonprofits and other organizations deliver amazing programs to their community. We did want to share some highlights of some of the tools that we used today in case you missed some of it. First, the ability to use public forms to capture interest and applications from the community. The ability to use forms in a unique way by using them internally with your organization to really help them in capturing that data, the notes, any record updates as they're speaking with the clients and individuals that you're serving and be able to just put that information across a variety of different records. Also, one of the biggest advantages is of course the pre-fill. Many of us often go and have to fill out a paper form where you've already provided that information to the organization in the past. Being able to use these digital forms allows your stakeholders to save time and see that you actually are listening and capturing that information for them and being able to share that information back so that they can update it and keep their record current at the same time. We also hope that you saw some of the dynamic functionality in the way that we can really customize one, two, three form builder to meet your needs, whether it's updating the filters of what options are shown to a user or selecting which fields are made available based on the information they enter or once they validated that that individual is a student in the program. We also hope that you saw how forms can really help not just capture the quantitative data of how many participants um, were involved, how many hours they were engaged, but also that qualitative information of self-perception of what their um, change as a result of the program resulted in. That qualitative data really is gonna help you and your organization share the story and impact that they're having. It also helps you to capture that feedback from your participants, especially those net promoter scores. Um, if you're seeing that a lot of individuals are um, recommending you, kind of like we saw with the uh, app exchange ratings for both uh, 123 Form Builder and Demand Blue, it gives confidence to your funders and stakeholders that not only are you operating a program, but you're operating a program that really is providing benefits to the community. Of course, the star of the show was the 123 form builder and program management module. But in there, you may have also seen that we used Experience Cloud to present these forms and allow them to really integrate. And that's at no cost since we are able to display this on a public site. You're able to use Experience Cloud without any additional licenses. And of course, analytics tools like the reports and dashboards that come with Salesforce, or if your organization has more advanced needs, you could definitely use Tableau and manage and measure the same types of information. At the start, we kind of talked about some of the use cases that forms can be used for, not just for your programs, but for your entire organization. Hopefully you saw ways that you can use some of the types of forms we demoed today at, to help your donors and engage more with their interest and um, create unique forms for your fundraising needs. We also hope that you got some ideas about how you can use the pre-fill functionality to do wellness checks and other engagement with the clients that you serve and how you can 
capture information from volunteers and volunteer leaders that again, better manage your programs. Um, but you can also go ahead and reach out to myself through the Demand Blue channels or to Andre and his team through the 123 Form Builder channels to go ahead and get started and address any specific questions that you may have for your organization. We'll post this to our socials when the recording is available and also send you an email um, with it. Thank you all for joining us today. And we look forward to helping you create some dynamic forms to revolutionize your programs and other engagements. Thank you and delighted to be here and uh, be able to assist you moving forward.